All right, this is our video lesson on simplifying, multiplying, and dividing fractions. Our next unit is going to be about algebraic fractions and the manipulations we can do. I'm putting this on video lesson because it's mainly review um, from eighth grade. There's only really one new thing I'm going to be teaching you, so it's all in one sort of lesson here, um, and I'm kind of going through these problems to review with you. All right, let's say you wanted to simplify 6 over 15. Most people would say, well, both of those numbers um, have 3 as a factor, so I'm going to divide by 3. And I'm going to get 2 over 5. Fantastic. There's a slightly different way of looking at this, which is a little easier for our purposes, which is to say, well, 6, 6 is 3 times 2, and 15 is 3 times 5. And what we can then do is divide out by the common factor. So it's just a different way, really very different, just a slightly different way of looking at this. We can do 3 divided by 3, which is 1, and end up with 2 fifths. So we're going to take this method and apply it to simplifying fractions. The idea is that we have to simplify. We can cancel or divide out by common factors. That's the governing idea here. So similarly, in number two, we have 6 over 20 times 10 over 3. And you may wonder and say, well, okay, so I can, multiplying fractions, I can multiply numerators by numerators and denominators by denominators. So I get 6 times 10 is 60, over 20 times 3 is 60, and 60 divided by 60 is 1. So we know this is 1 from some simple arithmetic. It's a slightly different way of looking at it. I can say 6 is 3 times 2, 20 is 5 times 4, 10 is 5 times 2, and 3 is just 3 times 1. And I can cancel out some of my common factors. So, for example, I have a 3 on the top here and a 3 on the bottom. They can go away because 3 divided by 3 is 1. Because ultimately, this is just going to be, this th the 3 on the top and the 3 on the bottom are going to be divided when you do 60 divided by 60. So, same thing for my 5s. I can get rid of my 5s as well. And then if I notice, I can do a couple of things at this point. I can do 2 divided by 4, which becomes 1 over 2. And then I can do 2 divided by 2, which is 1. And ultimately, I end up with 1 over 1. Every time you cancel something out and you don't have anything on the top and the bottom, ultimately you're left with a 1 because you're dividing. Similarly, with number 3, when we divide fractions, and we'll get into this a little bit more tomorrow, but when we divide fractions, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I have 9 halves times 4 thirds. And I can multiply across, which is just fine, but I'm actually going to use our method of factoring. 9 is 3 times 3. 4 is 2 times 2 over 2 and 3. And so I can cancel. I can do 3 divided by 3, which is 1. 2 divided by 2, which is 1. And I end up with 3 times 2, which is 6, over Every time, if you're, left with, if you're left with no factors, you're really left with a 1 on the bottom. So I have 6 over 1, which is 6. And we're going to take these three things and apply them algebraically right now. So let's say I had number 4. I'm simplifying this. What you can't do is cross out common things that are added and subtracted. So for example, I'm not able to just cross out the, neg the 3x squared because they're not factors. So for example, if you were just thinking of it a simple way to do this, if I had 7 plus 7 over 7, okay, we know 7 plus 7 is 14, 14 divided by 7 is 2, so we know this is 2. I can't just go crossing out 7s like this and end up with 7. That's nonsense. So when I have additions or subtractions, I can't cancel because they're not the opposite of the division symbol or the division sign. So what we have to do is really factor. And so if I look at my first part, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x, I can factor out an x, and I'm left with x squared minus 3x plus 2. On the bottom, I can also factor out, I can actually factor out a 3x. So I'm using my GCF first, and I'm left with x minus 2 in parentheses. And now I can continue to factor. So I have x, x squared minus 3x plus 2 is a pretty simple trinomial IM problem. And I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to uh, positive 2 and add up to negative 3. And that would be negative 2 and negative 1. And on the bottom, it's already factored. So let's see what cancels now. x minus 2 is being multiplied by things. And so is this x minus 2. It's in a parentheses, so it cancels because it, they're being multiplied by things. 
The other thing here is to is to see that really I could put a, if I wanted to put an x a parentheses around these x's, the x's are being multiplied, so they go away, and I'm left with x minus one over three as a simplified answer. All right, let's take a look at two more. So I, in my next problem, I have 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 over 4 minus x squared. The bottom is easy to factor. It's just a dots problem. You can do it in order. If my 4 comes first, my 2s go first. And 2 minus x and 2 plus x are my factors. Now my 3x squared minus 7x plus 2, I can't factor out of GCF. So it's going to be an AC method problem or kind of a guess and check problem. I'll use the AC method. It's pretty easy here. 3 times 2 is 6, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to positive 6 and add up to negative 7. And that would be negative 6 and negative 1. So I'm going to split up my middle term into negative 6x and negative 1x. And so my 3x squared minus 6x, I can group that together and factor out a 3x, and I'm left with x minus 2. And I want to match that factor in the second grouping, so I'll factor it a negative 1 and I'll be left with x minus 2. And then this factor, I could take out my common x minus 2s. And this is all review stuff. That's why I'm going through it pretty quickly. Times what's left over, which is 3x minus 1. And so now I have x minus 2 times 3x minus 1. And you may be wondering where this simplifies. And the answer lies right here. And this is, this is a little new to us, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this x minus 2 over 2 minus x. Well, let's say for a second I plugged in a number for x. So let's say x was 3. Ah, uh, not 3, sorry. Let's make it 5. If I, if I made x 5, then I would be working with 5 minus 2 over 2 minus 5. And if you notice, what I'm doing is I'm subtracting 5 and 2 in the opposite order. So on the top, I end up with 3. On the bottom, I end up with negative 3. And that simplifies to negative 1. Now let's say I make my x uh, 10. 10 minus 2 over 2 minus 10. Well, I'm doing, the same, I'm doing the same sort of subtraction with different numbers, but I'm doing the subtraction, same subtraction problem in the opposite order. So 10 minus 2 is 8. 2 minus 10 is negative 8, and I get negative 1. What's going on here is if I take two numbers and I subtract them in the opposite order, they're always going to be negatives of each other. So x minus 2 divided by 2 minus x really simplifies to negative 1. Another way to see this is that if I have my x minus 2 times 3x minus 1 over 2 minus x times 2 plus x, what I could do is I could factor out a negative 1 from, say, this factor. So if I factor out a negative 1, so I have x minus 2 over 3 uh, times 3x minus 1, and then I'm going to factor out a negative 1 if I do that, negative 1 times negative 2 is 2, and negative 1 times negative x is positive x. And then if I rewrite negative 2 plus x, well, that's identical to x minus 2. And then I can get my negative 1 that way. Either way, I kind of like to look at it the first way, that if I'm subtracting two things in the opposite order, I automatically know they divide to me negative 1. But you can also look at it as a factoring thing here also. Whichever way you slice it, it it's come out to negative 1. So my simplified answer here would be, I'm going to put the negative on the top, the negative of 3x minus 1 over 2 plus x. And you might want to rewrite this, distribute your negative sign through, and you would get negative 3x plus 1, which is the same thing as 1 minus 3x, over 2 plus x. And that would be a simplified version. The key here is to recognize that when you're subtracting two things in the opposite order, you actually get a negative 1 when they divide out. All right, so let's handle this monster. Um, I wanted to give you one of these. You've done these in middle school, like I said. Um, that's why I kind of want to just basically breeze through and remind you of some of this stuff. But here's the last problem um, that I'm going to do with you, and you guys are going to do the rest. So I have 4x plus 8 over x plus 1 times 2 minus x over 3x minus 15 divided by x squared minus 4 over 2x squared minus 8x plus 10. First thing, handle the division. Make sure you don't forget about the division. The division needs to be changed to a multiplication of the reciprocal. So I'm going to put that 2x squared minus 8x minus 10 on the top 
and x squared minus 4 on the bottom. And now it's a matter of factoring. You've got to factor every single piece. So 4x plus 8 has a GCF of 4, and we're left with x plus 2. 2 minus x doesn't factor. 3x minus 15 has a GCF of 3. You've got to look out for those little GCFs. x squared minus 4 factors easily is the difference of two squares. And 2x squared minus 8x minus 10, we're going to need to do two things. First, we have a GCF of 2. And then I'm left with x squared minus 4x minus 5. And then I really have to factor x squared minus 4x minus 5, which I'm just going to do down here and then erase it. So 2x squared minus 4x minus 5. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 5 and add up to negative 4. And that would be x minus 5 times x plus 1. So that factoring, I'm just going to basically erase the x squared minus 4x minus 5 and put that in its place. The x minus 5 times the x plus 1. If you like factoring, these are fun. All right, now, now it's just a matter of canceling stuff out. So I see an x minus 5 that can go away. I see an x plus 2 that can go away. I see an x plus 1 that can go away. And now I also see what we saw in the last problem, 2 minus x and x minus 2, that divides to negative 1. I put that negative 1 in the top. And now it's a matter of cleaning up. So if I look at what I have left, if I kind of look at what I have left, I want to highlight it. I have a 4. I have my negative 1. I have my negative 1 here. I have my 2 in the top. And I have my 3 in the bottom. So then I'm going to multiply across the tops. 4 times negative 1 times 2, which is negative 8. Over the bottom, all that's left is 3. So this actually simplifies to negative 8 thirds. All right, your homework is to do the three problems on the back. Very similar. I'm not looking to trick you. This is really just a skill-building exercise. Thanks.